When is the right time to bring up price when you are trying to outbound market your domain name? Hey, Chris, I got media options to help companies to acquire the wrong version of the brand and broker in some of the best domains of the planet. Check that out over at MediaOptions.com. Check out ChrisZeiger.com. I do a daily podcast. I'm on episode 700 in gazillion or something. I mean, crazy. I think it's like uh, three years I've been doing it now since 2017, so a long time. So check that out. A lot of good, valuable information. Every single day, five days a week, I try to do a podcast on negotiation. So anyways, this was a question I got from uh, one of my posts on LinkedIn. Uh, if you're not connected to me on LinkedIn, do it because I do a lot of information just there just because it's easy for me my platform, you know, I can get on and do a video uh, versus this, right, versus doing YouTube. But anyways, it was a question I got, and I think I was talking about worldview, like my my view, okay, on selling, okay, this worldview, self-view, then there's like this um, this roadmap and this action, right, to, to, to selling a domain name. Uh, Couple that with, with like Jordan Belfort's method, like kind of have a unique way that I found is successful in selling domain names. But anyways, the question was, hey, well, when do we bring that up, okay? Now, it's interesting because in general, uh, the general is like you bring it up when, you're, when your worldview is aligned, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is that most time you're reaching out a domain name, you don't want to say on the first email, hey, here's the price, right? Because the reality is, is that most of the times they don't even think they need a domain name, right? They don't even, they're not even in that, in that, in that, in your world, right? They're maybe worried about payroll. They're worried about marketing. They're worried about uh, something personal. So... Uh, you know, it's not the right time to bring it up. You want to bring it up when someone's leaning in, okay? So uh, in general, I mean, there needs to be like this worldview, like uh, your worldview is near the line. Now, an easy way to sell, tell this, okay, is when you're marketing the domain name at the lower tier, okay? I call it the, okay, so I, there's a pyramid. If you can see my hands, right, like this, okay? And that bottom tier of the pyramid, which represents most of the volume of domain sales, uh, I call it the small business hobbyist, okay? It's like the small business hobbyist, the local small business, maybe kind of going into semi-regional small business. Then as you move away up the chain, it's like the national small business um, or like a multi-state small business. And then you get your uh, your um, your viable, your scalable startups and your, your, uh, your, like your serial entrepreneurs and your Fortune 500 startups, okay? So just a as like a way to recap, okay? Now there's like little subsects in all these, uh, there's different industries, okay, that's going to change, but in general, okay, that's how I view it. Now, uh, if you think about the, the bottom level, okay, when do, you, when do you bring price up? Okay, well, you need to have a buy it now price, and the reason why, the reason why is that, like, this customer, they're buying it, it's impulsive, okay? They're up late at night, one night, they hate their job, they're, like, telling their, you know, their, 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 their best friend, their wife, their significant other, hey, I want to start something and do some of my own. Okay, maybe they get fired. Okay, in this environment we're in today, I mean, it's very likely you could you could have to pivot because industries are shut down. You just don't have the income coming in. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, I did it. I did it with Vivace Nutrition. I started a, a, a protein business up, and then I kind of, when I got fired at one point, and then I kind of pivoted over in, into domain names, and then I just said, nah, I got to put that on the side because my focus is going here. But anyways, uh, in this instance, like the worldview, it just, it's like super quick, right? It's like, they're, they're researching it. They see they see your domain name. They see its price in the three thousand to seven thousand dollar range, and they whip their credit card out and they buy it. They buy it. Okay. So if you look at GoDaddy, they, there's a couple very very good. I think it was two name names cons ago. I don't even know where to find it. It's on Media Options somewhere. It's on Domain Sherpa somewhere on our YouTube channels. But there was a there was a presentation by someone at GoDaddy, and I think it was Paul, and he basically laid it out. He you know said, hey, this is where the sweet spot is in the sales that they do. Okay, the sweet spot being the majority of the volume, okay? I have no idea the majority of the dollar sales. But uh, it's, so it's super important. So in that standpoint, you want to have a buy it now price. Now, I'm not saying in this instance, like, don't have a price, okay? Because you have to have a price. You have to have a price in mind because, you know, in general, like, if someone's reaching out to you or you're reaching out to someone, they need to know the target, okay? That's, the whole, that's, that's this whole aspect of worldview and worldview alignment, Many times what you have to do is you have to break their worldview. Say, hey, what you think of domain names just simply isn't right. Okay, and that's the, this part of rapport building, okay, and getting into rapport with someone when you're trying to sell them a, a domain name. And that's really what your number one objective, okay? Your number one objective is to present the name, get it on the radar, build a little bit of rapport, and help them to see that their worldview is not right. Now, you help them through stories. You can go back to my YouTube videos. I've got a lot of stories. I, I love carrot.com. I love kraken.com. I think it's a great story. 
Uh, what else? Uh, Hive.com, Teamwork.com is a great story. I mean, there's just so many really, really good stories. I'm trying to think. Lawn.com is a great story. Uh, the new one that just popped up was Workforce.com versus WorkforceSoftware.com. I mean, really, really brings out the seven, the first, the first dimensions of the seven dimensions, and that is global positioning, right? I mean, if you don't own your brand, it just creates this massive confusion. And so, uh, I mean, there's just like this, there's this, this stage, this evolution of the sale. But what it involves, it involves worldview, okay? And this worldview is like, you need to get them to see that, hey, what you think of domain names just simply isn't true. Like, you need to own this. This is the biggest risk you have to your brand. And if another company acquires this domain name, well, guess what? They're going to own the global positioning. They're going to own, I mean, you're forever going to have, like, your industry positioning is going to be, tarn is going to be at a lower level because all the players you're playing up against, well, guess what? They own the raw version. Now, a great industry that I like to, to, to comment on w when I've talked about this is the sleep industry, okay? So you have like avocado beds, you have purple, you know, purple.com, uh, you have tn.com, right, with Tough and Needle, you have casper.com, and then you have like avocado beds, and you have like all these ancillary, like, you know, like kind of at the, uh, at the lower, I wouldn't even say lower level, probably lower level volume, but just because it's like they've, they've just created confusion and they haven't made it simple for their brand. They haven't stood out when their com competition really is very simple. Uh, it's very clear. Uh, and I don't know how much volume they do. I mean, maybe they're phenomenal at, um, at direct response marketing. But what I do know is that when you create, like, confusion and you don't, you don't make it simple and effortless, there's this halo effect that goes into the brand. And, you know, depend upon your industry, depend upon the brand that picks that up, I mean, it can... It can in the case of like Kraken.com versus KrakenRum.com, it can have a significant impact on just the like the long-term life of your marketing message, right? Your marketing message um, just becomes uh, it, it 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 becomes much more direct response marketing. Kind of comes in direct response marketing comes in and goes out. And I, I'm not gonna tell this story because I just I don't want to go long. I don't even know. Let's see. I'm at like seven minutes. So, anyways, when you tell price, will you tell it when they're leaning in? So. Uh, you know, typically for me, it's like um, I'm reaching out, I'm getting a domain name on the radar, and the first question, like I try to get them on the phone, but the first question that comes back typically is like, what's the price? You know, and so you have to be able to, to like give them the price at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, typically a lot of the domains we broker, you know, they have a price already on our site because that's, you know, kind of one of the, the prerequisites when we broker, uh, broker a, a domain name is that there's like, um, you know, there's a set price that we can sell it at, okay, in the contract. And so I mean, they can see it there. I usually give them the price, followed up with a lot of information, and then from there it kind of takes over from rapport building to get them to see the impact of the domain name to the business. And really just to make sure that it's like um, it's on the radar when the timing is right, okay? Because the reality is that, you know, most times, listen, the timing is not going to be perfect. I mean, it just isn't, right? I mean, there's different cycles of the business. There's different cycles of the year, right? Q1 versus, you know, Q4, for instance, or Q3, for instance. So you know, right now is a very slow time for outbound marketing. You know, it's not for acquisitions. Acquisitions are, for, are, are still very strong. But outbound marketing, most people are on vacations, right? They're on vacations, and they're setting up right now for their strategies and you know, like kind of their budgets depend upon how their company works. They're going to make their initial budget. And, you know, that budget could uh, maybe get approved in October, November, maybe December, okay? And then they kind of execute that in Q1. So, I mean, what we see is that Q1 is, is the best time of the year for us. So, uh, I said a lot here. Hopefully you found some value in this, uh, in this video. If you did, share it up. And I'll try to kind of recap my thoughts. Let's see, I made a, a couple notes here. Global positioning. Uh, you know, when you get over $100,000, it does take time. Uh, you need a target. Uh, um, uh, you know, one, one fast last uh, point, okay, and that is like you got to have a price for your domain. You know, it's interesting, you know, I reach out on, on you know both the buy side and the sell side, and I mean you just be surprised at how many deals just don't get across the finish line, and companies end up going with a different domain name because like there's no price. Like you, you throw an offer out there, and it's like ah you know that's not uh, you know we want more right you know come back if you you know come back with a higher offer, higher offer, higher offer. Well, what happens is that if you don't have a price set, you know these companies like they can't chase a moving target, right? I mean you know, through their their, through their management, and their leadership. Um, you know, if you don't have a price, you want like, we'll just make an offer. Well, that's not good enough. Make, make another offer. What happens is that, you know, their leadership will just walk, you know, it just creates this indecision. Okay. This, that's actually a big topic. I'll, I'll hit that on, on a different video because I'm going long here, but if you found a value, share this one up. 
going over to chrisacker.com, download my book.com strategies. It's in like down below here somewhere. It's in the, um, the description. You can see a link down there. Share it up. Go to mediaoptions.com. Check out the domain names. We've got a lot of phenomenal domain names we're brokering. Check out dnx.com and uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, and check out my YouTube channel. I've got a lot of videos on domain pricing and other just on my my theories of selling domain names and, and just the uh, my journey into uh, into domain names. You just got done listening to another episode of Dot Com Strategies. Check us out online at chrisziker.com and at mediaoptions.com.